Are you building up and training A players in your company or is there a foul stench of mediocrity? Yeah. This one gon' hurt Down bad boy, sad boys I've been representing since birth Yeah, I was down bad about you But I'm about to have you down worse I swear you're dead to me Does Mercedes make a hers? Matter of fact, everybody in this bitch Scream my age Fuck my age Fuck my age Fuck my age Instead of fuck my ex This is for my ex I'm gonna change the lyrics on his ass For my ex This is for you <laughs> this is for you, Jenny, if you're ever watching this video. <laughs> What's going on, guys? So I am currently in front of the boxing gym. Got here a little early, so I decided to shoot the intro to this vlog, which is titled, Show Me Your Team and I Will Show You Your Future. About to jump in the gym and break that down for you guys. What's up, dog? March 16th, Boston, Massachusetts. I'm going out there, get a dub, KO finish. At Cannon Goes Boom, give me a follow. I'll follow you all back. Enjoy the journey. Go. So just like the head coach of an NFL football team, your job as the CEO is to hire the best team, make sure they're trained up, and to put the best strategies in play, meaning your product, so that you have a vision on being the industry leader in results. And so it all comes down to the team, and the strategy, and the leadership. Just like a head coach of an NFL football team trying to win the Super Bowl. So this is literally how I see it guys. The agency space is competitive. It is a competition. Business is competitive. Like that's just a fact. And so the agency space is a competition between whose team, daily execution, and strategy is most superior in the marketplace. The CEOs who understand this end up becoming the industry leaders that take the most market share, hands down. So when you look at your industry, you need to be thinking, if I'm going to win big, I need to build the best team and the best product, period. On a side note guys, I wanna say how much of a game changer it is to be in some form of monk mode. I know you guys hear about monk mode. It is super powerful and so I've basically been sober for the last two weeks. My exercise plan is dialed in, my diet is dialed in, my information diet is dialed in, meaning what I'm reading, what I'm listening to, my sleep is dialed in and I'm honestly feeling like a superhuman right now. And I think the biggest one is just cutting out the alcohol and going to sleep early and waking up at the same time and feeding your brain with just business type related podcasts and books that are gonna help you solve the problem that you're currently facing in your business. So I just gotta keep with it and not fall off. So I think I got this from Alex Ramosi, but he says the quality of your talent is gonna be directly proportional to your growth. And that is such the truth because I can tell you scaling the agency to where we're at now, 35 team members, employees, and trying to get to a million dollars a month, it just hit home. And so one thing you got to realize is you have two options. Option one, when you're first starting out, most of you guys are going to hire cheaper talent. Let's just be real. You guys are hiring VAs, you guys are hiring cheaper talent. And what you gotta realize is when you hire cheap talent, you better make sure your training and ongoing training and management is 10 times stronger than it would be if you hired someone US based who came in with experience. So the time it's gonna take to take a low paying salary employee to get them to ramp up to an A player and hit KPI is gonna be a lot longer than hiring someone who's been in the role for years 
and already has tons of experience. So your patience needs to be there. Now that's the difference between hiring cheap versus good quality is the time it's gonna take to get them to where they need to be in the level of training that you need to put in. So whether you're hiring cheap talent, mid talent, or high-end talent, the question is, are you building up and training A players in your company, or is there a foul stench of mediocrity happening on your sales team, on your account management team, on your marketing team? At the end of the day, it's your job as a CEO to make sure that leadership and training is absolutely critical. So I want to share one golden nugget with you guys before I jump on this call and that is if you're a CEO and you're seeing that your results and your team is plummeting, the first thing that you got to deeply analyze is the leadership, is the training, is the culture. That is the number one thing and I've experienced this firsthand that when I saw departments starting to decline in KPI and results, I started to look at, oh, how's lead quality or how's this metric or how's this metric? When in reality, all I had to do was jump on some of these calls, listen to how these meetings were being run, listen to how leadership, the strategy leadership was putting forth in that department, interview a couple employees and realize that's the problem. Write that down, just know when results start to tank, first look at leadership, look at training and look at the culture and the employee headspace, number one.